All right, welcome to episode three of my American Football 19 series. And uh, obviously I'm still with Emerald Forest. We are now about mm, almost midway through the season and doing pretty well so far. Uh, if you've been following my Twitter at all, you'll, you'll have seen I've been mostly successful. We'll kind of start off by recapping how the season's been going. So obviously, um, done pretty well. Start out, won the first three matches. The win against Inter Nashville, which you guys saw, was was my most lopsided, uh, easy 4-0 win there against the state rivals. Um, then we went down to New Orleans, had to uh, win it late. You can see Drew Christensen, uh, my left winger, although I can play on both sides. Uh, with an 85th minute goal and then Greenville FC we took us even longer to find the winner but again it was DC with a goal in the first minute of stoppage and then we got kind of a fluky own goal where a shot uh, ricocheted off the uh, crossbar and then I guess hit him in the back of the head and went in the goal so um, we that gave us a 2-0 margin there to uh, home get match against Greenville then we went down to Atlanta SC. Atlanta SC, and looking at their at the squads, they probably have the best squad in the league, uh, which close with the team we're going to play today. And um, didn't go super well. We did control possession, but they created more chances than us. They earned the win. And they got a penalty in the 80th minute, and that was the difference. But the truth is, they deserve the win. Um, they're Really, they got a better team, and I I have to rotate pretty heavily, and so I'm sometimes I'm trotting out guys who are not first team quality, but you have to do what you have to do to stay fit, and so um, so that was a tough loss. It was away though. When we came back home, and Scott Wright kind of bookended the match with goals early and late to give us a 2-0 win against Asheville City, and they did have a player sent off, and that really helped. But we really we were we were controlling the match before he was sent off. But one once he was, we absolutely dominated possession, and I think we walked away with seventy one percent in that match. So so that went well. Um, so right now we are first in our conference, the uh, Southeast Conference, and we'll we'll look briefly at uh, we'll look, we'll just look at the Southeast or the South Region standings as of now. Um, and yeah, so we're in first. Second is Asheville City. However, uh, we do have a game in hand on them, and then both the third and fourth place teams actually have two games in hand. So probably Asheville City is about mid-table. The real surprise is Atlanta City. They've lost three matches, and that's that's a bit of a surprise because, like I said, they have probably the best squad in the league between them and Chattanooga FC, uh, probably the two best teams. So... Um, Doing well, we're on pace, obviously, to to win the conference, but that's we've still got nine matches to go, and that's a lot, and we've not played Chattanooga FC yet, so we do that today, and that'll be fun. We'll talk a little bit about that. Just looking around the south in the Sunshine Conference down in Florida, you've got Miami FC, who's probably the best team there, is out in front with maximum points from three matches. Uh, Storm FC is even on points, but they have a game, in, or Miami has a game in hand on them. Really can't see anybody overcoming Miami FC. As you can see, their goals for and against is is they've scored 24 goals in three matches. Uh, the, the results here at the bottom, you see Miami. They they beat Naples 6-0, um, three one win over the Armada U23, 5-0 over Storm FC, and then there's the big with 13 to nothing over Palm Beach United. So. Uh, Miami FC is probably, well, they are. They're the they're going to be the best team in in maybe in the South, and we'll talk about why in a second. Um, then we look at the Lone Star Conference in Texas, Fort Worth out in front there. Um, you got Shreveport, Katy, 1895, Laredo Heat, all kind of right there, and then the Heartland Conference. You see FC Wichita out in front, and they um, that probably is fitting. They're one of the better teams in the Heartland Conference. But one thing about FM is uh, next year, okay, the NPSL Pro Division will start in, in my game. And, and it, in real life, it, it does kick off in 2019 as well. All the teams that are in it 
will have a higher reputation in their professional clubs because that's a pro league. So in the beginning, these teams, the Chattanooga FC, Miami FC, they, they're going to start with higher reputations. They're professional clubs, so they're, the squads they have are going to be better than most of the other teams in the NPSL in FM. Um, so that's going to make it really challenging to win the league because we're going to be playing against professional clubs and we're a semi-pro club, but uh, they do still have to follow all the same rules, the over-23 rules, and um, that's actually kind of, you can see where Chattanooga struggled a little bit about that. Um, looking at their squad, um, they you know you look at my scouts or assistants' uh, opinion of their ability, and they don't look great. And but what also kind of hurts them is they have a lot of over twenty three players, guys they can't register, so that does make it that, that's kind of hurt what could be a really good team. Um, but looking at their results, they they lost to Greenville at home 2-0 and then drew Georgia Revolution which you see that and you think that those are obviously those are poor results but when you look at those games it they really what happened is they got FM'd <laughs> they controlled both games but Greenville FC just finished their chances better and same with Georgia Revolution um, but they got things turned around they beat Atlanta FC 2-0 and Atlanta SC which again Atlanta SC probably has the best squad top to bottom in in the conference and then went over to international and got a 2-0 win there so um i thought i'd take a few minutes here talk a little bit about the emerald force they used to be a uh, the knoxville force and started play i believe in 2011 and i actually was one of the i've been a season ticket holder ever since um and they Let's just be honest. Not one of the best clubs. Um, they've had some pretty bad seasons. They have. I think they've had winning seasons three years. Um, made the playoffs a couple years. They actually are. The, I'm pretty sure they are the only other team besides Chattanooga FC to win the Volunteer Shield. They won it once a couple years ago when they had a really great year and then lost to the playoffs. Um, they've never actually won a playoff game, so that's a little frustrating. Um, one of our biggest rivals because of proximity is Chattanooga FC the team that we're going to play today and Chattanooga FC um, is I mean I see them as the the strongest club in all of the NPSL which doesn't sound like a big deal the NPSL is the fourth level of American soccer but there's like 80 something teams now and they have been to the championship game four times, which they've never won it. But on the field, they're more consistent than any other club uh, in the NPSL. There's only one other team, uh, I think it's the Sonoma County Soul, that's been to the championship game four times. So they, they consistently win, which um, if look, I don't follow foreign semi-pro league, so I don't know how it goes around the world. But here in the NPSL, the, the results are extremely volatile. Teams can have incredible seasons you know, one year, and then the next year they don't win a match. I, um, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on why that is. Um, it's, it's probably the dynamics of the league. You have a U, it's U23, and so it's mostly U23. Um, so it's a lot of young players and it's a lot of college kids and so these college kids will come in usually no more than one season and you know then they're gone um, so it's it's the fact that they are able to win so much shows that their uh, their front office does a great job um, a better job certainly than anyone else in our in our conference um, but also better than most of the clubs well, than almost all the clubs in the NPSL, which is, is pretty impressive. Um, just an example, AFC Cleveland won the league in 2016, and then they folded after the 2017 season. So uh, the NPSL results, very volatile, but Chattanooga FC is consistent. They're consistently one of the top teams in the NPSL. And not to mention their, their fan base is incredible. They have easily the most well-supported team in the NBSL. Um, I know like Detroit City has a great following, um, but 
I, I can't really speak for Detroit City, but I've seen the Chattanooga FC supporters um, as a Knoxville Emerald Force fan. Uh, and every year they roll in with a big Greyhound bus. They get off. They you know, and um, and I'm talking about at our home matches. It's not. It's only like a two hour drive, so it's it's not super far. Well, <laughs> in U.S. terms, it's not super far. Um, for us, that's a pretty close distance. Um, for, right for other places, that's probably kind of further away than other clubs. But so two hour drive. They roll up. They get off their bus uh, and they're like a they're a passionate supporter group, you know, beating their drums, singing. Which you know, our t- our fans, you know, we've got a we've got a small supporter group, which I kind of was a part of, and we have some songs, but it's nothing nothing like the Chattanooga FC supporters. They're um, easily the best in the league. So I am I am a I have my scarf here. I went and got my scarf. I probably should have already been wearing it. Um, this is back when we were the Knoxville Force. That's our old logo there. We got to pull it out where you can see it um, on one end of the scarf. And then this is our supporter group. We call ourselves the Scruffy City Syndicate. Which Scruffy City is the um, it's the nickname for Knoxville. Um, it goes back to when when the pioneers were kind of moving west. Um, Knoxville was sort of this stopover where people would. Um, stop over on their way to the west and most of the men uh, that would stop over in Knoxville were, were scruffy and so that kind of um, that kind of became our, our the nickname for the city of Knoxville um, Chattanooga is the their official nickname I think is is the scenic city but there's they have all kinds of nicknames actually the one one that's come up recently um, is like the gigabyte city or the giga city because apparently they have the best uh, internet connection in all of Eastern America. So um, they're really impressed with that. But um, yeah, big props to Chattanooga FC. Best club, probably, I'd say best club in the NPSL. If I'm just, you know, speaking honestly as a impartial observer. Um, and yeah, both on the field and off. So um, and they're moving up to the pro. I'm glad to see that. I, I kind of hope that the MLS is probably um, at least in the current format. MLS is too high to reach, but I'd love to see Chattanooga FC in in one of the upper divisions. Um, you know, they don't seem to be interested in joining the USL, but I could see them. Com- I could see them being a respectable club in the USL Championship division, which is right under. MLS, um, so I, yeah, um, but they're our opponent today, and they're, well, they're good. So let's see how it goes. I, I really don't. Um, if I'm just being honest, I don't anticipate. Oh, I need to go add my great players. I don't anticipate a victory. If I'm just being honest, because <laughs> <clears throat> well, their success as a club I think translates pretty well to the game. So um, one thing I did do, and we'll, I'll look, we'll look here when we get to the, uh, I've got a couple of, I don't like starting a 92% player over, say, a 95%, but this is my best 11, and I wanted to have a chance, you know, you want to win, you want to beat your rivals, um, and this is a potential six-pointer game, so I really, you know, I, I want to go for this one, and I feel like the quality difference is enough that like Sawaf needs to be starting over um, David Johnson, Christopher Munoz. So, so that's my reasoning. Um, hey, let's pick up where we left off. I don't have very good success with that team talk. I don't really know why I did that, but I do want to pick up where they left off. But we give him a, I give him a, you have faith, and let's kick it off. Again, I'm not. I'm trying not to make sweeping tactical changes. This is the basic way I want to play eventually. So, uh, and we don't, you know, semi-pro clubs. We don't train as much as the pro clubs, and so we don't have full tactical familiarity yet. So I'm going to try and get full tactical familiarity before I go into a lot of big tactical changes. So uh, Chattanooga FC got the first shot, but we quickly got one. Um, 10 minutes in, not too bad. Winning possession. Not giving up too much. 
And free kick. Oh, get the first goal. See, now here's where I want to get cute and make changes, but I'm going to let it sit. Goal on a free kick. Uh, Scott Wright in the right position after a deflection. And he gives us the 1 0 lead. All right. <clears throat> uh, I like it. Getting a lot of free kicks in their zone. They must be fouling. They must have hard tackling. Free kick. Clear it. Okay. Got it out wide for the throw in. <laughs> All the highlights so far have been free kicks. Which, hey, it's going to be a physical affair, right? You're talking about rivals. <laughs> 15 fouls in the first 25 minutes does seem like a lot. Um, just perusing the stats, though. I like the... Oh, Campbell with a foul. Campbell is mine. I really, in the offseason, right back is going to be an area that I really need to kind of fix. <clears throat> okay. You know, we do have the goal, but it's, it's a relatively even game. Like, uh, we not a lot of great chances. I have the one clear cut. I have more shots, but that doesn't always... Uh, Getting fouls. Here we go. Fouls on the back line is bad news. Might have to see my. Um, hopefully, I don't get a guy sent off, but I do kind of have a system when I have a guy sent off with my 4 3 3. Four cards in the first half. Um, it's not a lot, but it's not few either. Wright's about to get booked. A goal score. And I don't know what you guys do. I always ease off tackles. So it's when I get yellow cards. I think I said that before. We are we do have we seem to be controlling the run of play. We've Oh my goodness. Oh I thought another guy was getting carded. <laughs> okay, so um quick perusal of the stats. Eight shots to three. Three shots on target to one. That's that's good. Yeah, 26 fouls. It feels like a lot. Um, five cards. So, yeah, see, I'm, I'd say things are going better than I would have expected. Um, I'll look a little bit at the analysis, but I'm not going to... I mean, heat map seems to be... Well, they have had quite a bit of possession in our end, so... My center back's making mistakes, and theirs are not, but we have the goal. Um, sometimes I do maybe question the way FM calculates some of these, but but the, but those you know what those are stats that kind of show that the looking a little more in depth um, might reveal more than what the overall stats are going to show you. Like you look at the overall, so eight shots to three, three to one, sixty six percent possession. Then you look here, my center backs are making mistakes that could be costly. Um, yeah, I won't look at much of this. This is, we're just trying to get through this. Um, sometimes I will spend way too much time at halftime looking at, at analysis. Just, and really, I mean, a lot of time, most of the time, right now with this team, I'm not even really making that many changes. I'm just curious to see. Uh, I'll try to gather some data on changes that might need to be made. Um, and when I get into the playoffs, I probably will make some changes because, you know, that's playoffs are one off. You know, it's win or go home. And so, um, yeah, they're, they're important. All right. Uh, I'll tell them happy your performance so far. Keep it up. Everybody seems to like that. I go for greens. I've seen people say that you sometimes want, um, like if a player's not playing well, you want them to be pissed off at your team talk. I, that may be true. I don't know. But I, I, just, I go for what I can see. Green is good, red is bad. <laughs> so, um, but again, I'm not an expert. So, all right, uh, in, pep, in team talk. Let's see how it goes. I did get to get all my widgets set up here so that I can kind of keep an eye during the run of play on things like um, player attitudes, which with this team, it, you know, my is not gonna always be good, and I just have to accept that. Um, 
you take what you can get squad wise at this level in, in football manager um so Sawaf unsurprisingly in yellow card on a Chattanooga player is fatiguing faster than anyone else that I probably will send in Munoz and did I get a card player booked I'll cross in the box that they get was this me no All right, win that long ball. And I, I got to say, f just from watching, my wingers are playing the way that I want them to. Um, they, when, when we're building from the back to the front, they're out wide. I, I want them out there to open up the other team um, or even to get the ball and go with it. Although looking at the I'm play here. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and sub now. Um, yeah, I'm going to take off Munoz. I'm going to leave Murray on for now. He'll probably be my next sub. My midfield usually fatigues faster than everybody else. My midfield triangle. Oh, rest. We need that goal. Rest. All right, um, this is where it gets kind of, the choices are a little harder. Um, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring on David Johnson and I'm gonna move Elijah Martin up. Elijah Martin is probably my best player, so I'm gonna play him at the 10. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm gonna bring in Lev Black, my backup striker. He um, he doesn't play a lot. <laughs> Rass is a pretty good player. Oh, we got her sending off. Me. No, that was one of theirs. Okay, I thought I thought for a second there, right got sent off. Uh, Eighty-five minutes. So yeah, Black doesn't play a lot, but his finishing is actually higher. So I'll bring him on as a like a late sub, hoping that he can. You know, maybe get a late foot on the ball, steal a goal. Um, and do I need to bring on? My back line looks okay. I am going to bring David Nordy on for Alvarez. And I'll go ahead and. And I looked, I can actually get six subs in the NPSL. And when I set up these rules, that's what the NPSL rules were. I don't know if they've changed, but. Okay. Um, McCarthy is my most determined player, so um, he I kind of bring him on as a super sub, and he comes in and works, and you know maybe he can get a get a ball and, and get it to to Black for a late goal to kind of put it away. But we're in a good situation. They had a guy set off, so there's a man down. We're up 1-0. Um, they are going to come at us, but I'm going to stay balanced. Now looking at it, I may want to drop back. Let's see if they get a goal out of this highlight. This will piss me off. All right, let's 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 go cautious. Drop it back just a little. Munoz out to McCarthy. Oh, gotta get to that. All right, final minute. This would be a big result, a huge result. Put us on the track to win the Volunteer Shield, which in the game is not, in FM is not real. It'll be just for, <laughs> just be me. All right, and that's it. Big win, um, and well played. I think it was well deserved. Um, the highlights were not, you know, super great. We weren't, we weren't going to look really smooth, but um, at this level, you're not with this quality of player. But we did have 64% possession, um, 12 shots to three. Um, we had the only clear-cut chance of the match. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll take that result. That's good. Big win over the arch rival. For us, it's a arch rival. Chattanooga probably thinks of one of the national teams as, as a bigger rival or whatever. But um, for us, the force, we can we always saw Chattanooga as our biggest rival. Uh, okay, well done. And get out of here. I'm going to go back and look at the overall stats.
real quick. I won't keep you guys too much longer, but passing numbers were good. You're talking about almost 90% from front to back. Um, a lot of times your back line does not. Um, you're passing Their passing percentage drops in the low 80s, and I don't like that. I got to try and Partly it's 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 my the guys I have, but um, tactically I'll have to look at that. But you look at just the overall number of passes, almost 700 um, for us um, completed 628. They only com- they completed less than 300, so um, that's good. Uh, obviously, it's like it's the way we want to play. So yeah, I'll, good result. Uh, they didn't even have any half chances, right? And I, you know I play with the philosophy that if you keep the ball then they can't score uh, and so it, that's a yeah good win for us so looking ahead we will be playing international next uh, going on the road probably I'm gonna play through all these and I don't know maybe we'll do a marathon playoffs uh, video where we I, we just go uh, we, we live comp all the playoff matches see how far I get I don't anticipate winning I, I really don't even think I'll be able to get out of the south um, too many good teams in the South. You got Chattanooga FC, uh, Miami FC. Until they leave and move up to the professional division, that's that's going to be a big ask to overcome those teams with the with the squad I have. But you know, um, that's a big big road win. I also I'm, I'm, we've won all of our home matches. Just thought I'd throw that out. Uh, I feel like in, if you can win all your home matches in this at this level, that's twenty one points. So. That's bit that'll be big. Um, so if we can keep doing that, keep winning at home. Um, the big one is going to be the Atlanta C- SC home match. They're only team that's beat us so far, and they're probably the best team in our conference. So, so we'll uh, let that be the end of it. And big win over the rivals, as we are well on our way to winning the Volunteer Shield. And I will see you guys when when it is playoff time. <laughs>